everybody and welcome back to these views and it's an effing book club and today we're gonna um what are we gonna do oh. today we're going to review um our august read of the month which was one nun and well we said it was one nun and a hundred thousand which by luigi pierre and Delo, written in 1985 published in 1985 i think it was when i did my research i think it was written over a span of seven or 12 years or something but 13 13 okay wow so but you know when i was doing also some more research the book says one and a hundred thousand but it says the actual book is one no one and a hundred no one i was thinking of the same thing also i keep i keep on getting one no one and a hundred thousand somebody are gonna do that but anyway, this was Sir Simon's suggestion. So we're going to speak. This is about to be super short, or maybe we'll, if this is long, we, by the, whoever watching this, if this is long, by the time we get to the end, you just know we're off topic. I already calling it now. But uh, <laughs> this is about to be short for me because I had to give up. I you gave had up. to give up. <laughs> no, I had to. I was going off. This man was book? using more words than he needed to. Like yeah. instead, I, he just said "because" it's like for the reason be. <laughs> I couldn't continue. To, <laughs> I couldn't continue. Like wow, like and I don't learn it. Like nothing stayed, and it just seemed like everything was repetitive. <laughs> yes, right, it was. Yeah, yeah. All right, but let, let me. So, so, so before we get into the book itself. Oh yeah, we need to speak about the man. You know anything about him? But go ahead. I don't know anything about him. I didn't. I, I didn't actually. I didn't read. I anything. actually was reading up on him and um, his wife. He wrote that book. I think a couple of years after his wife was admitted to a mental, a mental, a mental center. Yes. Um, and he and he was actually going like that. Just his wife telling him about his crooked nose, like actually sent him down a rabbit hole of madness. So before we get into the book itself, let me say why I suggested this book. <laughs> One day I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw this image right? and the person said, this is tripping me out, send help. Right? A different version of you exists in the minds of everyone who knows. I read a book that blew my mind. The main character goes crazy when he realizes no one really knows him. The gist is that the person you think as yourself exists only for you. And even you don't really know who that is. Every person you meet, have a relationship with, or make eye contact with on the street creates a version of you in their heads. Mm -hmm. You are not the same person to your mom, your dad, your siblings, than you are to your co-workers, your neighbors, or your friends. There are thousands, there are a thousand different versions of yourself out there in people's minds. A you exists in each version. And yet your, you, yourself, isn't really a someone at all. And that also tripped me out. Right? That I mean, also... I, I kind of knew that already, you know. Not trying to say, you know, I, I smart and thing. But, like, yeah, I kind of always knew that. But I didn't know. Knew, I thought everybody knew that. Kinda. That's how I felt also. Like, for me, the book was just like, I know that already. I feel like that's a book for someone who's just starting on the journey of being away and so i mean it was just because you, you were aware in, in your 20 I, plus years okay. yeah i feel aware of the you have a third eye growing all right my yes dear. so okay. like for me and for me it's like a, for me that whole book if you really if it wasn't for like the funny parts and stuff it would be a book of depression be not like you always like for me for true because i've always thought of that myself i was i've always I was just this morning, I was actually thinking of you, Veronica. I said, I wonder how you view me. Like, who am I to you? You understand? Mm. You could never... I know who I am inside. I know who I am. And even what sometimes I feel like I do not even know myself. But then, um, <laughs> I was like, how do you see me? You maybe see me as this silly, annoying, always making mistakes. But then that's, that's, that's how you see me. But I don't see myself that way understand and so i thought that that idea always exists i thought everyone knew that and i was just like okay whatever fair finish that was fair finish i i kind of felt the same way too i wouldn't say i was disappointed in reading it but it was i felt similarly also in terms of 
Like I knew these things already. Some of the things that he explained that he did in the book, I've done that to myself. For example, he was saying something about him looking at himself in the mirror yeah. and trying to not see himself, himself. He's seeing himself, but as the stranger that this person actually is. I've done that. I've sat there, looked at myself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And I used to do that a lot when I was younger. Sat there, look at myself in the mirror and just sat up there for a long time. And then you would feel, he explained something. And I was like, yeah, you just feel like you end up looking at yourself and then it's like you can't recognize this person because yeah. you start looking at yourself as a stranger trying to see how others see you. See you. And I'm like, I used to do that. Like, I, I used tr- to do that plenty. <laughs> and the same thing I used to think about, I used to be like, who are you? Like, like, what is this? Like, what is this? You know, even just this as flesh. What is that? So you're looking at it, you're just trying to figure out. And then it's strange because it's like, it's an actual outer body experience. And I was mm-hmm. like... Um, actually, there's twice on two occasions I have, that has happened to me. There's a time when I saw on a bus heading from school, when I was heading from school, right? And then I, I just happened to glance in the mirror and I jump. Like, hey, say, hey, hey, who's that pretty girl? Who's that pretty girl? I say, oh, oh my like that. God. Okay, because I was, I was but saying, then I, I look at myself. I look at myself and I just freaked out because, like, wait, that's how I look. Like, he's looking at. That's how. That's the, the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> I don't know. I look at myself and I just say, hey, that's how I look. Oh my God. Then the second time was I was in my room. And um, I was lying on the bed, and then I have a dresser in front of me. So then when I sit up, I would automatically see myself, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I sit up, I saw myself when I freaked out for like a couple of seconds because like I didn't recognize the person that I was seeing. Like for some strange reason, I don't know how to explain. Like it wasn't the Chelsea that I always looked and saw in the mirror. My God, that, like, I don't think that's what me and Sir Simon are talking about. <laughs> when you, when you when mean? You stay there for a while. Then I could understand your brain trying to get used to that. But you see, as soon as you see yourself, you see somebody else. Not somebody else. Not somebody else, but like I That's felt like I was just... seeing. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain. I felt like I was seeing myself from somebody else's eyes. I don't know if that was it. <laughs> okay, you know what? I feel I like I'm to... saying too much. <laughs> That's how I felt. I don't know what that was. So I felt like me and the author had a connection and shit. <laughs> because I would not feel like that thing. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, with different people, they probably a shorter amount of time. Sometimes yeah, you could just yeah. sometimes you could be watching yourself the whole time and be like, who, like I know who you are. Like, you know, anyway. Yeah. Um yeah, I gave up about chapter six or so. But because but from the reviews I've seen, they said more or less it's the same. It's the same um, theme throughout the whole book, like how people see you to see yourself. And I think they gave different examples of that. So, But one of them that really stood out to me was when he said, um, to some people, you're an amplified version of yourself. So let's say if you had like, in my mind, this is what I thought, like if you have 10 different parts of yourself, like strong characteristics, like you're funny, you're smart, like, you know, things that are very consistent with who you are throughout your life. Um, they, he's, he said like somebody will see you as one amplified of one of those characteristics. So it's like, like oh, my friend Veronica, she's so funny. But then somebody else will be like, oh, Veronica, she's so smart. Like they remember me to, to be smart or whatever. And I'm like, it makes sense, you know, because you take people in different doses of stuff. And, I, and I'm wondering if it's because of, it might also have to do with the person and what they receive. Like, and how they perceive uh-huh. you. Like, it doesn't have... And that's the funny thing. It doesn't have nothing to do, really, with what you give them most of the time. It's like, yeah, they see you give them something, of course, but there's a certain part of you that is amplified to them, and people will be fixated on that. Like, if they... What I find a lot, too, <clears throat> I'm not being funny. I am not trying to... <laughs> but, like, because... I feel like people feel like I exude sex a lot. Like because of the way I look and the way I, the shape and then like I get a lot of I get a lot of like like when I meet people, not just men, eh, but mostly men obviously, because whatever. But like 
people see me like I remember a lot of for a time when I came when I went to school like I, I was having issues with um get becoming friends with the girls that are now my friends I guess you could say that but when in the states when I like with girls I was having issues being friends with girls and I think they just really saw me and it might have to do with the light skinness too just saw me as this sex symbol no I don't want you I don't want to say symbol but it's like <laughs> it's mad that, man. Like, I was just exuding that and then they thought I was like like you know really like trying to just grab men like just pull them you know and I'm like I'm not even on that but I still acknowledge my sexy side I don't I don't feel like I should um uh that definitely whatever that in order to make people feel I have done that to feel comfortable I've done that with other parts of my personality and I've regretted that and I'm slowly making my way away from that but um yeah like like I thought that was very interesting because you, you see amplified versions and then I was just thinking how it could be because of people and their perception and what they want to think of you and what they think It's the same thing like even with racism you don't have to do nothing but because you know a black person to you is this kind of whatever you see them is like it's like that's what you put that's what you think towards them like even um tourists when people come down like tourists here they automatically think that's people with money yeah you know like or even like in our culture we feel like people, like hispanic people. men don't have any um um and um what <laughs> what was that <laughs> what what do have any sneeze shut <laughs> spanish men spanish men and white men like in our culture we automa- we automatically think that you know ding. i would think ch- asian people before asian around. people too but then no but for us i feel like from i've known a lot of women say that white men are like that and um spanish men Really? I mean, I chance to be on the cultures or whatever, but as you know, that's da, da, da. Mm. I mean, but it, that's kind of like a truth, isn't it? But now if you're going off like you have that truth that fact about them and then you're going off of that like the whatever you think like what you think masculinity is. A lot of men feel like masculinity is associated with what between their legs, which is whatever. And um yes, <laughs> why well, whatever it's a pedo. <laughs> no, I'm not saying no. Not the thing is whatever. I'm saying the fact that they associate masculinity with that. That's yeah. another story. I don't want to I'll sum it up with whatever. So, um, is how you the perception of these people now? Because Spanish people, Spanish men are also known to be romantic as well. Very. So, I never really associated I never heard that either but I know That's because I guess I was looking at almost a lot of them so I think they average and hear me like you No they not I'm thinking <clears throat> like, it's like if black men were like above like they they in the middle and then Asians on a side Hey you know black men can have Yes, like the same way white men can have it. There are anomalies. I get that. That's why I'm telling you, like that's just a myth on a whole majority. because Asian men also. No, I think it's very rampant over there. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like it's rampant, and I think they even have a set up on um um thing to that. Why are you shaking your head? Like I'm not shaking my head. Oh, I just I'm not saying. Like you know they have different fetishes of porn. I think it I think it's not just a stereotype, it might be true. No, I don't feel so because I was watching this thing on YouTube oh. where this guy, this Korean guy was um, answering questions and one of them happened to be about that and then he said that is not true. He actually said that they actually study quote unquote, well, not quote unquote, but sex and they 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 come up with different ways of pleasing and whatever like they're very yeah, I have to go to Korea the last thing Bernie said was um you you right so people yeah. people people the the image or that people get of you is an amplified version of a bunch of things that you are that's what you said mm-hmm. right? No, and no, no, not bunch of like one of them. Like they get right, different so, so, levels. So, so, of so it's one of a lot of things that you have, a lot of characteristics that you have. 
Yeah. You're smart, you're funny, you're pretty. Yes, yes, yes. Right, but people are going to be over. And one person is going to be like over. It's so pretty, one so smart, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get an amplified version of one of those things that you are. And you said you feel like it could be not that you've given that off, but is that that's what they're receiving. I mean, you you give it off, of course, to some extent, but right. then I think it also has to do with their character. So if a man, like, just walking around, like, always having sex on the brain or whatever, he's just looking for his next place to put his, you know? Like, he would, that would be probably a measure, like, he would be like, oh, that one's sexy, that one's not, that one's so the, you know? And then, like, even if they're interacting with that person over and over, that's all that really been thing in his mind. Well, they'll give up, right? But I was saying, he also mentioned something that those little characteristics, those things that people see, is you that give them off too, huh? Um, I don't know if you got here, but he gave some example about um, somebody was somewhere, him and somebody was somewhere, and then he, he was with two friends, and one friend had to tell one friend to leave, and that the friends weren't... Um, compatible or nice to each other right it's just that you created this version of yourself to this one friend and ah. then there is another version of yourself that you create to the other friend and Ooh. then if both of them link together it's like you you know they don't know who they talk embarrassing right it's gonna yes. be embarrassing oh, wow. you push to this person and you push off this other one to this other person and then they not embarrassing themselves you feeling embarrassed for that version of you that you created. It's some foolish just like that he was saying. And I was like, it's that true. Makes, yeah. you, you, just, you just give off things too. Although, yeah, it's probably what they experience at that moment. Not that you pushing it off, but you just give off things too. I have friends and I'm like, sometimes I don't want to mix my friends for that same reason. Uh. Because <laughs> I can have too much different hats to wear and it's like, all right. No, 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 no. But if but you were wearing the what, but, well, I guess, I guess, no, no, you know, to some people, they'll say that's kind of like fake, eh? Yeah. Like, like you've been, like, you know, I don't say you, but I'm just saying. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> like, it. it's almost nothing. But then it makes sense, like, because with certain people, you're more comfortable to be a certain way. Yeah. And then yeah. sometimes, like, you don't want to be funny all the time. Sometimes you just want to be serious. Right. You know, and then you have a friend for that or a couple of friends and you're just really serious and that's why I guess too like even with a group of friends when those persons when they like they pair up at different times they are different people to each other so I remember an incident where I remember an incident where I was with three of my friends well it was three of us and then one of them told me later like she, like, she was feeling left out because of the way I was interacting with the other one like we were just giving jokes and giving jokes and just laughing and being stupid like and i guess she wanted to be a part of that too but it's like so you can't we relate know, to that we're person not like that you know right. when i thought yeah. we we not like that we we joke yeah. yeah but then it's like like we we always oh we always talking about boys or something you know like that's a friend i'll be like oh yeah 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 but then the other one she would know but not in the same way like that one, you know yeah. like yeah, so, ah, yeah. I see that. And, and I was but like, yeah, I do that. Sorry, what are you saying? Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, I do that. Like, and it's not like a, a big thing. It's just a matter of how much you allow this person to see of you. Yeah. That's where this feels for a lot of it's for me. Like, I have friends that I will go and party with and I will, you know, drop. It's but, a uh, bad, uh, yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> No, for that time, even here. <laughs> I have friends that I can access to, to the way with, right? And then they have other friends that know I do them things, but they will never see me doing some of those things because I'm like, that's not for you. Yeah. That's for these other people. And then they have other friends that's like, you, you might not even know that I do some of these things, you know? Now, you know a way this go as well is like, Sometimes you allow people to do more things, certain people to do more things to you or get away with certain things, but other people you don't. Now, when you when these people meet up, like let's say that person still being their self, like giving you jokes, but then you end up cursing that person out because in front of that person you usually the tough guy. Like you see that a lot with um men. Yeah, I was about to say like men probably at their home versus at work. 
you know, yeah. like probably or uh, well, with their brothers, like their brother and they're like, you know, like kiss you out and then, you know, but then your your colleagues, like they say your manager looking at you like, okay. And then oh, you end up it. Yeah. Yeah, you end up um acting out of character or at or, or negatively towards that person who would just be in themselves or just being in the natural place with you, like how you allow things to happen and you mad now and you're, you create a problem. That's why I feel like it's always good to, if you don't like something, you don't like something with everybody. Yeah. You cannot just accept it something. And then, <laughs> and, and you have to work on that too. Cause I've been in a situation where I've allowed certain people to, you know, walk over me, but then other people I would, you know, stamp on the neck. And then that, sometimes that's not the people that really deserve to. You know. I was, I was coming to see that, um, <sighs> that um, I feel like I am just free. Like I am myself no matter where I go. People always know me as this crazy Chelsea. Like this Chelsea. That mouth that, my mouth that no break. It's like this Chelsea. I feel like I also, I feel, yeah. Like I would just see it. Like it's the truth. I'll just see it. That's a Chelsea that I feel like everybody knows. Oh, yeah, I would feel like I, I have never, I have never, I've never gotten the only thing i've gotten is that when i'm alone that i'm really quiet that's what they, they some people say that they've seen the the more vocal side of me and some people can see they've seen a very quiet side of me like if i'm home no one wouldn't even know if i'm in the yard like i'm really really just to myself sometimes and and you know too people would when they find out certain things about you that when people surprise like like people would be surprised i was a very quiet child very, very, Me very, too. Very, very quiet. I was very shy, and I still have certain parts of me like that. But I'm, I was very shy, and, I, and as I got older, I had, I forced myself to do a lot of things just so I could experience life. So <laughs> I was very shy. I was afraid. Singing was something I used to be afraid to do to the point where it would physically stop. Like the fear <laughs> was there. Like. And then I had to force myself, like, I, ugh, when I was a, 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 older, like, even if it wasn't the best sounding, I wanted to do it. I feel like, for me, like, like you know that Chelsea, but then I feel like sometimes when people see the other side to me, like, the person that I know myself as, like, the person who likes to draw, the person who likes hey, like to write sometimes. Oh, drawing labs are not the best. What? That's, okay, that's impossible. Yours was the best for it. Because I have another side to me that can be a little bit of a perfectionist. Like, I want things a certain way. Like, I have, like, weird times to me. And if only if you live with me, you get to know me. And people always call me weird. Like, persons that actually know know me, that my cousin, Yannicka. Like, she knows me at the back of her hand. And she'll think, like, she feels like I'm weird. Like, there are certain things that I wouldn't do. <laughs> or that I would do a certain way. Like, okay, audience. So, um, so, like, I, like, I want it, like, I want it in order. So you can go in the pan in order. Okay. Well, Pardon? No, like little weird things I about me. I went to like me, I like I'm cooking. Like some people, no, some people just, just cut, like they did it. Some people, but anyways. Yeah, so I feel like there are certain things about your, person, your personality that should be consistent. Yeah. And there are certain things that don't matter what you do, no one would even, would even know about it. Like, and, and, people don't know I'm quiet. I'm quiet, yo. And that's, that's, my that's, that's, that's well, you said something that which was one of the main well, well not main things one I think that he said you said people know you as crazy Chelsea right that's what you were essentially saying and then mm -hmm. you were like um but when you're by yourself you can be the you that you know you are something like that you said mm -hmm. right and it's like that's like okay so this crazy person is not really you is this person that's just you when you're quiet or when you're by yourself or when you're home with your mm. other family? And like I'm all, like I feel like, there. and just now, we, we he said what, what he said was, um, you, I think I read it down. Did I write it down? Hold on. <laughs> we think, we think. People see us the way we see ourselves, right? So you might feel like I'm quiet, I and remember people that. tell you that you're crazy, and you're like me crazy. I so quiet, and I, you know, you you feel like you just normal and quiet. 
Mm. Mm. And you feel like people should see you as normal and quiet. So when they tell you you're crazy, you're very surprised. You're like, what are they talking about? I, just, I think I'm uh, laughing. I think I'm like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say some fuck, but the, <laughs> you know that singing too. But the person who knows you the best is always the person that's closest to you, which all obviously makes sense. Yeah. But like you could also the closest person to you physically, mentally, everythingly is yourself. But right. I feel like you can know that person, but you have to make an investment in the same way. In the same way you make an investment in other people to get to know them, you have to do mm-hmm. it yourself. I think automatically we think because we're just in this body, this is us. And the, I feel like that's selfish. If that has to do with selfishness, too, I don't know why I just make the connection. Like, but it has to do with that. And like, you have to make the investment in yourself to find out who you are. Who you are. So you're not surprised by certain things. Like, you know, I like certain like God people make mistakes and just be like, oh my God, like I can't believe I do that. I can't believe I did that. Like, or like unless like somebody else could have say, like I've been telling you that's how you are though. Right, right. Like, you know right, what I mean? Like right, I've been right. saying so that's, that's I've always been happened put to the me. Ice back. <laughs> I just always do that. So your fr- and and you, 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 your friends, you know, you just be like, dog, I tell you, this going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. If you do that, yeah, it's good. Now that thing will happen. They go downstairs, do the same shit, and they say, oh, I do that. What tell her yesterday? <laughs> and, and you're right. If you don't know yourself, you can always make mistakes like that. Yeah. And then you find out they just are uh, how people create or construct different versions of um, versions of ourselves. So, for instance, my sisters. One of my sisters might know me as very loving. The other one knows me as very harsh. And the one, and I could be loving, but every time she see me behave in a certain way, like she, like no matter what I do, the only thing that she can see is the harsh side. Yeah, I understand. understand. And like, so people this to get to know the other side. The other side. Um, and he said that in the book that it's an illusion, right? You, because, okay, Veronica, you right here, you, you, right? You know me as silly. You know me as clumsy. Mm-hmm. But what if it's like over-exaggerated <laughs> and I am not clumsy? I have too many examples. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I feel like for me, like, I feel like sometimes I, it's like, like, it's like, like it's like a loop like i keep on making this like subconscious like i keep on thinking like i'm going to mess up every time so i just keep on doing it yeah it does it push that on you that's true that mm. is true that is true when i, I tell it. people like if they keep saying like certain things and i mean we see that with children like you keep saying they're stupid they're stupid they're stupid they will start believing it or they 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 are whore and they are this and da 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 like and it's it's almost a thing like maybe they know something about me i don't you know, like, and, and that's why I feel like getting to know yourself and being firm in yourself is important because you'll be out here doing shit with yourself you're going to regret just based on who people think you are. You are. Mm-hmm. My goodness. <laughs> I should be a preacher. <laughs> My God. But even, and, and even if that is who you are, you know, not, not something bad like a liar, but something that is Subjectively bad, like for us, like a whore. Mm. Not so bad, right? No, well, right. So some people are <laughs> relatively bad, right? Some people are gonna think that that's bad. Some mm. people are gonna be like, you know, but even and if it you are, the times, mm-hmm. right? Even if that is what you are, and and somebody calling you that, but you are yourself. You know that this is what I am, and you've already accepted that. Like mm-hmm. you could go and do it, enjoy yourself. Be protect. I uh, use protection, not get unnecessarily pregnant, etc., etc., etc. Right. So it just goes back to knowing yourself and knowing that this is who I am. Even if these people seeing this about you and saying that this is who you are, like, I'm not saying to not deny it, but just yeah. know how to walk in your truth and don't feel. <laughs> yes. You know, like just yes. as you say now, they you know thought that started triggering. You know what we are to people? 
a number on the scale of their morals. If that makes sense. Uh-huh. But that, if somebody that. see, like as you said about being promiscuous, like like promiscuity is not is like something they really feel like is wrong, whatever. <laughs> Like they would see somebody else and see somebody like with other guys or something like that, and then say, um, "Oh, that person promiscuous." And but they stay in with one person who treating them like shit, but they're not it's, seeing that that person is like a hundred percent in with these people. But then it's so work out. It's like okay, on to the next. Like I can't stay there. Like and that is actual growth. But then the other person would stay with See somebody that. like 15, 20, a million years. How endless children, the person have you acting outside of your character, fighting with people, all kind of thing. You understand? Like, 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 um, like just ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I know women who, even though men have brought back these diseases for them, they still stay. Like, you me, health is a serious you know understand health is significant to me i like i'm like uh no 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 you're putting my physical self at risk for your pleasure you definitely do love me you understand but and because that's sad. i'm not saying with nobody because of some moral like, and it's so- sad and it's sad that in a society we live in this society it's mainly women that do that to each other men do it too but a lot of women they judge they judge it uh, judge each other yeah. right if let's say for it's i, I can never forget that but, but I, it has I'm to do safe. with who, who again coming back to who they think they are because they think they are yeah. look at who like somebody putting that image on them the same way we were saying like if you keep calling somebody stupid you keep saying women should be like this women should be like this and then like would, you have you're doing mm-hmm. these things and that's not even really what you want i even remember people saying that um you're worn out you're worn out if if let's say you had three partners but you're with one partner for five years he he have access 24 7 how you been i worn out you yeah, know that, that oh that is true yeah that's people actually say that people actually feel like like that they, they put like they put you in some kind of d- a dirty bracket like you you nasty like you and i feel like that's wrong you understand but then again it's who you are it's the morals that you give yourself and you impose on other people which is not right because we all come from different backgrounds, different walkings, different morals, different upbringings. You could never see or understand my life through your eyes. No matter how much how much you try to understand who I am or to see, just to have like, even if you feel like you have an understanding or feeling, you could never know what it is like to be me. And I could yeah. never understand what it's like to be you. I don't know, wake up with your mentality or your soul or your body and you live your life. No matter how much you try, you could never know me. You could never understand what yeah. it is like to be Chelsea. Like it's funny. After that's why I felt like this book was like it wasn't a big buzz for me because I feel like I have I have some sort of like I already know this. Know that, you have, yeah. Yeah. Like all saying. news to me. Yeah. You understand? It's and then another thing too I find very very scary is that like through 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 your eyes, through Veronica's eyes, through Sir Simon's eyes you know like you have like a different walk in life like i feel like the earth is a big ball and like each of us are roots different roots mm-hmm. but we're connected to each other but the different roots go to different places which means different experiences I, I, that's what i mean yes and some i feel like and some cross some, but yeah but then it's like it's like you could never be on the same path you could never be on the same path. And I feel like people come that into each other true. lives. Roots are people never on the same path. That is never. True. I feel like people come into each other lives um, for different reasons, right? We, our paths cross at certain points. Because I remember when I was at my lowest and who was there for me. And just you just happened to be there for me at the right time and the right place. Or sometimes when I was at that place, no one was there. But it helped me grow to a different level to meet with somebody else. To take me on a different level mm-hmm. and yet yet our paths intertwined but it, we were never on the same path you was you heading left and i heading right but we just happened to come to a crossroad yeah where we needed each other to get to the different the, the next level and so like i again i felt like this book was like all news to me because i've thought about it a lot in the past i always think about things like that like it's so funny that you would never know me you would never know me. You would never know who I am. Yeah. You would never know that I am not only loud, but I, I have a quiet, soft side. I don't get angry at all. And if I do, 
it's like it wouldn't last forever. Like I get angry, like and it's you could make me laugh now and I forget. forget. Yeah, what you're saying, sorry. Yeah, me no, I obviously have the grudge bad. But um the you know, oh that's something else. As I say, I have the grudge bad, but hold that there. I was thinking of the concept right. of nobody ever knowing you, but mind me just now. But when I was thinking about grudges, I was thinking about this in the same way we who we are to people is like what we see and 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 like like what like when we were talking about like with this friend you could be jokey jokey but now when you talk about boys or whatever i was just thinking about like when i find the ultimate way i don't want to say how i punish people but what i feel like i do like if i know somebody hurt me like really bad but i still have to see them or happen to see them and i just don't want to hold on to the anger anymore what I would do is just my punishment is withholding the best parts of myself from you. Like, because it's like, why should I even show you that side of me? Why should I even brighten up your day with a joke? You understand when you hurt me like that so bad, like I just be like, but at the same time, I not piss, you know? Like I not piss saying like. Uh, I feel like that's like a, I feel like, no, let me, let me, let me, let me explain. Like, let me just see, let me just see. I feel like that's a defense mechanism. I feel like everyone, everybody has, let me tell you, it's like, a, it's like, um, an organize, an organism defense mechanism. If you hurt me, what makes you feel like I would, unless if I have a mental problem, like it would take some time because you cannot, you think of yourself as a living thing like if i have a, if i am a soul if i am broken there is no way that i can give you happiness out of a broken heart that it will never be authentic because i am not whole because of what they did to you yes okay let me explain the 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 shell the shell is you know the chelsea you know uh-huh. let's say something was to happen and i was hurt that would i think that would never happen but let's say if you did me something that hurt me that broke me Mm-hmm. The the chance that you would receive after that would never be the same to you again. But then they have because I would that never would, give. That would not hurt you, and you could still do that to them, though. Like something yeah. could break you so bad. So then now you have to understand: is it is it that it's coming from? It's coming based on the person or based on your experience? I feel like I feel like we all we all learn from different things. And if let's say I I went through I went through something and um. I am now changed because of that then my reaction or my the person that i give out to people would be different and also it could also come from you in particular hurting me and me now trying to give back like try to mend and you know just like you know like chelsea there could only be one truth that's and you know what i need to stop saying that i always used to say that there's only one truth but then really you being alive is true. I've been alive is true. So these are things that are happening simultaneously. So I'm guessing they could have more than one truth. But anyway, the content, what you were saying a while ago, like it, like there's nobody in the world, like the concept of like nobody in the world could actually know you, which is your existence and life is just your existence and your personality and your characteristics. is like, that is a weird concept to me. Like, but there is one person that could know you. And I think knowing things or knowing people actually helps your human experience, knowing characteristics, learning things every day and learning different personalities. To me, I feel like that's a, 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 I feel like that's something that helps you move forward in life, like with knowledge or whatever. I, don't know. I agree but, partly. But I was saying like the you, but you can go through life with nobody knowing you, including yourself. Yes. Right. And, that and that's, is that's, that's and the, the, the other thing is you don't even know who you are. So and this is one of the things you were saying in the book also. Um, I mean, yes. you know Jeez. you, but you don't know because when you when you catch that little glimpse of yourself in the mirror when you're walking down the road he used this as an example he watched the person and he was like who's that you know i don't know who that person is and because he he he, he, he i like how he explained this he was like you can't see yourself living because you are living at the same time in time yes with the, with the mirror thing he said that around the mirror time right and um 
So you you don't know who you are. I I don't know if this has happened to all yeah? but like when I see somebody record me naturally, mm-hmm. like I just walk in or just doing something, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like the sound of your own voice. Right, does it like that's me? That's what I'm doing. So you, I've so had that experience with my voice. You don't even, and your voice too, you'll be like, that's how I sound. That's how I sound. I'm like, no, I need to stop talking because of that's how I sound. So, remember this guy spoke to you about this guy that wanted me to sing, whatever. But then, when he recorded me, like, I would always tell people that I do not find my voice unique. I always say that I do not find it unique. And like I don't find any, I do not find anything like special about it. Like it sounds annoying to me. I know. Yeah, sometimes you mean. like I would get tired of hearing my own voice, like me singing. At the time, like right now, I feel like I'm in a mood where I don't even want to hear myself sing. But there are very few times that I've heard my voice and I was be like, oh, it sound okay. Like when you played me back, I was like, that's how I sound. Like I sound dope. But then when I continue listening, I was like, uh. Uh-uh. Like I, I felt like I went yeah, back so into fast. what I know myself as. You see? Like I feel like that outer body experience can open, only happen for a short amount of time. Yeah, but you yeah. see yourself differently. But it, it, it cannot be a prolonged time because then, then yeah. you'll be mad. I, you I, always have to fall back into... Man go back mad. You, you, always, you always have to fall back into who you know yourself as. If you keep because on trying to see yourself outside of your body, you'll be quote-unquote a mad person. So then anytime you hear or you see yourself... Then you will freak out for just like a, a few seconds, but it would never be a long time. But you do, you do. That is, it, it used to freak me out. Like I actually stopped myself from doing that because I'm like, this could never be good. Like the the place my and just to say my mind, if to say spirit, if to say the place that was going to look at myself, I was like, Mm-mm, this could never be a good place. I need to come back to myself. And I had to, well for me, it literally had to like shake my head or like catch myself and be like, yo, come back. He, he, he sneezed and that brought him back to where he was. Um, to, what, if, what if that sort of behavior or that sort of awareness is like a different dimension to our being? Aye. Now we're going someplace. That <laughs> what if, because remember he long. said, he, remember he said, uh, but you remember he said that he kept he like he when he sneezed that he brought him back to reality. It uh-huh. brought him back into his inner self. Like he brought him back to who he know he knew himself as. Right. What if and that sort of out of body experience was that or that level of awareness is like a different dimension to who we are as human beings. Yeah, like being able to see who Yeah. But I feel like it can be a it can be a little bit crazy. Like people live on that conscious level all the time. It, it no, feels like I mean, a little bit off. It's okay, but it's to you because you... Okay, this is how I see it too. I see us in dimensions, as you said. One one dimension, 2D, 3D, 4D. You know, that kind of stuff. And I feel like like the person... This is what I, there's always, I always say this um, when I'm... You know, but uh, like <laughs> once you go through a level, you're able to go back sometimes. That's why you could reason with certain people that are simple-minded. You know, like it's like uh, da, 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 da. because you master that level, you could kind of even convince somebody to go into that other level, like a, a other train of thought. It's but almost like pers- saying with age comes wisdom. Yeah, kind yeah. yeah. So when, cause, yeah. but the thing is, like you cannot the person like they said, there's a higher level from where you are right now. You cannot go there yet until you learn a certain lesson or until mm-hmm. something just really changes. But that person could always come back and talk to you. And But I feel like after a while, you surround yourself more with certain people on your level. Like what the book reminds me of a lot. There was this thing, this meme I used to see. I don't know if you all saw it. Like it was a Japanese something. I don't know why I associate associating it with Japanese. But it's this guy. It's almost like the cover of the book. Like this guy, this like different mask taking off, and he's saying the mask that people see, the mask that your family see, and then the yeah. one mask is like just you. And even then, yeah. to some extent, you don't see yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I I looked at a movie the other day. I don't know why I ended up looking at this movie because it was very strange. Um, the, uh, this one guy, he was born and they were trying to make TV different. They were trying to make like television viewing different. 
So this one kid was born. As soon as the child was born, they put him into a TV show. Uh, but his life, him growing up, was the TV show. So he was placed in this dome with a lot of people around him, living like um, houses, everything built up. And um, he was the star of the show, but he had no idea because as soon as he was born, they sent him inside there. And so he's thinking, this is normal life. <laughs> and um, the people on the outside looking at the show, Right, and they're looking. So they're looking at his life, and everybody's like, "Oh, what Jerry gonna do now? Oh, Jerry going to do this? Jerry's going to do that?" Blah, 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 blah. Yo, I need to know this movie. But everybody on the inside, they have little cameras all over their body and recording every little thing he do. So every, but again, a little piece of him. His mother gonna get the majority of him. His wife gonna get a lot of him. But all these people are fake, right? Um, and that just went through my mind, like. Did everybody grabbing a little piece of you to build you, right? So yeah. everybody that you interact with, they have a small piece of you. Some people are gonna have more. You all have this portion of me. Uh, you know me more, Veronique, than Chelis. Chelis, you just know this, so you just have that small part. Veronique, you have yeah. a little bit more of my person. And that's mm-hmm. all everything is. Everybody have a little piece of you and kind of projecting it onto you to build the you that you are i know what you mean i feel like everything that happens in the spiritual happens physically too because what is it i show before you could name what is it that exactly like that in biology dna yeah dna i know that (laughs) (laughs) i was like what yeah, because you're a piece of this person and a piece, and then and then sometimes these people physically, physically influence that spiritual side of you. That's why I feel like it's amplified when somebody stays with their, when they with their biological family. Like it amplifies a little more, like who you are spiritually. Like your sense of self is stronger when you raise around people that that actually physically um. share your same genes. In the book, it speaks that ironically, pe- pe- persons' impression, um, exp- impressions of you are more accurate than how you see yourself, but no bias. one knows you mm. better than you know yourself. Oh right. boy, and then you know why too, because of a bias too. And then, and then you could even say the people closest to you have more bias towards right. you than people who don't, like us, or whatever. Yeah. Ooh. That is crazy. I remember this guy meeting me for the very first time. I met him for the very first time. But in his eyes, he always knew me. He knew where I live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> experience is a cutout. <laughs> it's serious. He knew where I lived. He knew what bus I took in the morning. He, knows that he knew that I always took the bus I lived that's down my hill to go to work. He knew where I was working. Like He always used to see me. He knew everything about me, but I didn't know nothing about this guy. And I feel like things that just trigger me to 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 these sorts of ideas yes, of or thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, like the or what the author spoke about. Imagine somebody knowing you so well that you don't like they know like you have they five. Know that first, they know. Yeah. And so that you, and, you that version and, of you. It's in their mind, at, and then you. Just from looking at you, they gonna be able to tell you things uh, about that yourself. you don't know you about yourself. Like how right, would I walk in like that? Yeah. Right. Like, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then one of your friends might be able to say, "Yeah, that's how you just walk." And I fidgety. Oh my! Oh, another thing was that when I was going to school, it was said that I always had a mean face. They never saw me smile. I was like, "You never see me smile. How you mean I have a mean face? You, eh, yeah. eh." Okay. Yeah, but it was because of what you were going for and people didn't know. So. Then but then I didn't even realize that it showed on my face. Right, mm. you think they see you the way you see yourself. You yourself. see yourself. And that's sad shit. Uh, it's, 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 I don't know if it's sad or if it's scary or if it's cool. I feel like the concept is cool. It's also very scary okay. that, that you probably think you're doing a lot better than you actually are. You know what I mean? True, you, you think you're walking down the road smiling, grinning at everybody, but you're walking up. 
you know. It's a yeah. serious place that's frightening everybody instead of being pleasant, you know. And, and I it, don't know. Did it, it, it surprise you? He said that too. Like when people tell you things, it surprise you. Okay. Again, we know ourselves, right? But then we, as much as we, I would, love, I would like to think that I am always the same person, like all the time. I feel like certain times that we we create different versions of ourselves to meet, or to meet new challenges, or to meet new people. Like we create not alter, alter, uh, not egos or person. Like for for me, there's Maybe a different persona. Two parts of you that already yes. Is that is already there like we i switch from this loud funny chelsea and then i switch into a chelsea that is more serious and focused and, I start, and, and somebody me too. yeah i guess and somebody maybe uh, i mean that person has the only version of i think i said that already but, yeah. but that's the only version of me that they know that's serious chelsea because of the environment that I am in. So I feel like sometimes when people meet that version of yourself, it's not necessarily that, not necessarily because you want to portray that, but it's because of the environment that you are in. Okay, so that's it. That's our discussion. I think this was my favorite so far. This was a really good topic. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, that book wasn't, oh, okay. Yeah, we have to read the there, book. We have to read the book. This was my favorite review so far. We talk, yeah, me too. We talk about a lot of things like a lot of up there things so um now all right so let's just give it a rating i was thinking we should do that and i'll put it on the thumbnail the different uh, average of what we rated i mean for what it was because everybody said and everybody i reviewed saying that it was a great book i'll give it 10 because man went home i'll give it i'll i will give it 7.5 because I, I i i was lost in the middle somewhere yeah. and then the 7.5 I give it a f- I give it a five. I give it a five because I felt as if the book was very repetitive. First yeah. off, yeah. and I feel like it's it was something I like I knew. <laughs> it changes for your point of All right. So all right, I will change my score. Um, now that you reminded me that I had stopped reading the book, so I can't give it a ten for something I didn't read. I didn't, I didn't think I should give my, my grader. But, oh, okay. All right. Okay, so I give this book a five. I give it a five because it was very repetitive and I felt like I knew majority of what was in the book. It, it felt like all news to me because, again, I am of a higher awareness. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had an Amanda the book about you. I mean, this is like, I live, that's my daily life. Like, I'm all, I'm constant, constantly fascinated with the version that people have of me in their heads. And so this book was the news. But it was very the stories and stuff. The stories, That's the different scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> you what? obsessed with the version of yourself people have in their head? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always that I told you that. Like I always want to know. Like I wonder how you see me. You see okay. me as silly, annoying, or just I that too. I that too. For but yes, as I was saying, um, I feel like yeah. I mean, but I would give him the scenarios that he gave and the way that he tailored the book to bring out the main idea, the main point. He said that the, he said the same thing in different ways. And so, like, I felt it was yeah, okay. For the reason <laughs> being. <laughs> but, yeah. It was okay-ish. Okay, I'll give it an eight. Seven. Yeah, seven. All right, seven. Seven. seven I mean, you only read five. chapter six. <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> I should give it a six one point. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I just couldn't look twice. What? I couldn't tell. I no, I had no zeal for this book at all. Yeah. But it was this Me book. too. I started I started reading it and then I was like, no, it's, it's confusing reading it. And then I was I started listening to it. Like it's not too bad listening to it like after it passed the initial chapters. And then I was like, um, I don't understand the first time, so let me listen to it again. Uh, All right, so it's my turn to suggest a book. Mm-hmm. But make it short and simple. You know, first testament, like one of the Bible out. scriptures or whatever. No, you will like this. Trust me. Now, um, I watched the movie. The movie doesn't. The weight loss thing. I, I feel, like weight loss. And I feel like. <laughs> They should have, well, if the money was out there, that story had to be told exactly how it's written. But um, it's called 
a half of a yellow sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. That's the same I the same one I told you I feel like she's my favorite author even though I've only read two of her books. Half of a I yellow just sun. Love half of a yellow sun. It's on there. I love her way of writing, like just the way she describes things, like in the in the person's personality. What's her name? Like, What's her name? What's her name? Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Oh, she's a African. Yeah, she's Nigerian. Half of a yellow sun. So she's a girl. She's the same one who did that. You know, in the flawless um, song, they have like a, a little speech in there. Beyonce, you wake up. We teach girls not to shrink themselves. We uh-huh. teach girls that, uh, yeah. that's, that's her. Yeah. Okay, sure. so we'll be reading that book. Um, yeah. Half of a golden sun, half of a yellow sun. A yellow sun. <laughs> oh, what would it? It's set in 1960, and it's really about this country Biafra, which was a part of Nigeria that was just in. They were just a country for three years in the 1960s, and how they had well, the civil war and how it affected, you know, and it and it and it's from the perspective of three of the main characters. It's a young boy, but all of them interact. It's a young boy. Um, um, he's he's a houseboy for a man, and the next character is the man's girlfriend, wife, whatever. And the third character is the the girl's sister's or, um, husband or boyfriend or whatever. And that, that's the three characters, but that's how they related. But they all interact. You see it in the book. Y'all will love this. It's a I, it's not a fictional book, but it takes away from the whole self-help we did it's self-help for four months no it's it's real it's true Ooh. i would like this maybe to do something about history the next time but this history? is kind of history no but our black history this is in nigeria didn't i just say that Absolutely. about Absolutely. caribbean we history about how other countries yeah. too involved in. this is not a, it's learning through storytelling yeah, anyway what is this one saying? Motherland jip on me, motherland, motherland jip on me. What is that jip on you? Pull up, pull up, so we know about to do this right now. Song? You don't know that song, Black Parade? No, motherland mother jip on me? Yeah, Black Parade. Oh, jip on me. Oh, uh. Hi, Beyonce. No? Oh, right. is that so oh, good? Beyonce. Oh, Beyonce. Oh, Beyonce. Hey, no. Oh, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say. Anyway, uh, let us end. I put Thank you. A calypso, so um, so this is our September read of the month. I've already read it, I read it last month or month before, so you will do that because I have no time. Um, and then you could even watch the movie and let me know, and we'll talk about the comparisons to the book and the movie between yeah. the book and the movie. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, so thank you. Nothing. Hey, hey, you don't say okay, bye. guys, keep okay. your intentions pure. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Be kind to everyone. Be kind <laughs> to anyone. Bye. Ellen, I'll be kind to everyone. Yeah.